This is a short tutorial on the use of environment modules on Helix and the BioWolf cluster. As you may know, we have over 400 scientific applications installed on the system in a central location. And most likely you want to run only a specific application or two and specific versions of those applications. How do you find out what applications are installed, what versions of those applications are installed, and how do you actually set up your environment to run those applications? All those things can be done with environment modules. The version of modules that we use on our system is called LMOD, and it was developed at the TAC, the Texas Advanced Computing Center. So um, what modules does is it dynamically sets up your environment, that is your environment path or your library locations for different applications. There's one easy command for setup. It's not shell dependent. On our system, we recommend that all users use the bash uh, shell. But if, for example, you want to use CSH or TCSH, you can use the same environment module commands without any changes. We have a web page on our system. Here's a URL, which describes the use of modules and describes everything that I'm going to talk about in this tutorial. And I recommend that for future reference. So how do you find out what applications are installed on our system? That is, what modules uh, exist and what versions of those modules exist. This is easier if I demonstrate it, so that's what I'm going to do. Here I am logged on to BioWolf with the username teacher and I type module avail, which is short for module available. In a couple of cases, uh, once in a while, you might get this rebuilding cache mes message, but don't worry about it. It's just setting up the uh, list of default uh, modules for you. So what it does is list every uh, application for which we have installed it centrally and written a module and every version of that application. So for example, we have the ants where there's only one version of that. We have two versions of the Atlas libraries, and so on and so forth. It's a, pre it's a pretty long list. In most cases, you're not going to want all this information. You just want to know about the applications that you are interested in. So suppose you want to run Bowtie and SAM tools. You, you might type module avail Bowtie. And it will list all the versions of Bowtie that are available. As you see, one of them has a D next to it, which means it's the default version. If you loaded Bowtie without specifying a version, this is the version you'd get. You could also type module avail Bowtie SAM tools. And it'll list all the versions of Bowtie and SAM tools that are installed on the system and tell you which is the default version of each. Suppose you actually want to run SAM tools. Uh, this in my default login session, if I type SAM tools, it's going to tell me command not found. That's because SAM tools is installed on the system, but the location of SAM tools has not been added to my path. If I type module load SAM tools, so that should get me the default version 1.3. It loaded version uh, 1.3, and now if I type SAM tools to actually run SAM tools. You see, it, it found the application and it ran it successfully. Let's go back to our slides for a minute. So that shows you the module avail and module avail application name. In this case, I showed, demonstrated module avail bowtie. Suppose you want to see what a module is doing. OK, I'm going to start with doing a module purge, which will unload all modules from my environment. If I now type echo dollar path, it uh, prints out my default path on the system. If I type module load SAM tools and then echo dollar path, you see that it's added the SAM tools uh, installation executable directory, user local app SAM tools 1.3 bin, to my path. Suppose you want to know uh, exactly what uh, an app, a module is doing. Some, this is a very simple module. All it's doing is adding this one uh, directory to your path. 
if I type module display SAM tools, it displays the actual module file. Module files are written in a language called TCL or Lua. You, you might not know either of these languages, but it doesn't matter. In most cases, you don't need to know the language. The module files are pretty easy to understand. So I typed module display SAM tools and it displayed the SAM tools module in Lua. And it says prepend path, which means add this to my path at the beginning of my path. And the environment variable is path and it's adding this directory user local SAM tools 1.3 bin to my path. And you see that's exactly what happened here. I did I looked at my path, then I module did a module load SAM tools. And then when I looked at my path again afterwards, it had added that directory to my path. Uh, the SAM tools module is also uh, adding um, this directory to your man path so that if you type man SAM tools, it would now work. So SAM tools is a simple module. If I type module display chime, a different application. You see it has a much more complicated module file. It's loading a lot of other applications. It's setting some environment variables and it's adding a lot of different things to your path. Let's go back to our slides. So if I type module display, I did a module display SAM tools before. Let me do it again here for clarity. If I do a module display SAM tools 1.2 then you can see the difference between the module for version 1.3 and 1.2 to load a module you have to type module load and the module name and modu or module load and the module name slash version exactly as I showed you with SAM tools suppose you want to see what modules you have loaded if I type module list, it will list all the modules I have currently loaded. In this case, it's SAM tools, one, version 1.3. To unload a module, you type module unload app name. So if I type module unload SAM tools and then module list, it should say that I have no modules loaded. You can also type module purge, which will unload which will unload every module that you have loaded. You can create personal modules. Why would you want to do this? Well, suppose you install an application in your own space rather than uh, asking us to install it in the central space. You might want to set up a module for that application. You might also want to set up a, a module for uh, a group of applications that you use routinely. In this case, I have set up a directory called my modules and it has two module files in this maprseq and ngs. If I cat this the ngs module you see it's very simple it just starts with the standard module uh, opening line and then it loads bowtie 2.2.5 sam tools 0.1.18 and top hat 2.1.0 so suppose I, I, in this case I set up this module because I always want these particular versions of this applic application. So if I type module load ngs, is it going to work? No, because it gave the error. It says it doesn't know about this module. And that's because by default, the system modules are in the in the environment modules list by default, but your own personal module directories might not be. So you can add your own directory. I'm going to say use module use dash dash append and the directory that I have with my module files. So this is going to add um, at the end of the mod list this directory to my module files. If I now type module avail ngs, you see it printed out all the ngs related uh, modules in the system directory and then after that it printed out the NGS module that I showed you up here. Now if I type module load NGS it loaded bowtie sam tools and top hat 
and if I type module list it shows me all the NGS module that I loaded and all the modules that were loaded within it. Let's go back to our slides. To see the default versions of any application, use module d avail. Module d avail. And that will show you only one version of each application, the one that's the default. In many cases, you might, this is a much shorter list than the full list, so you might find it more convenient. If I scroll back a little, you'll see that for OpenMPI, it still listed several versions. That's because we have not set up a default version for OpenMPI. You can choose whichever version you want, but for most applications, there is a default version. If I scroll back near the top, you see that some of the, the module names have uppercase and lowercase mixed. Some are all uppercase and some are all lowercase. Um, suppose you want to run MISO. You might not know whether we named it with an up, named the module file with the uppercase or lowercase uh, letters. So in that case, what you should use is the spider command. I can say module spider ENTS, for example. And it gave me um, the, uh, the, it does a case insensitive search among all the modules and it finds the ANTS module and tells me which version is available. When I actually load the module, I have the uh, name is case sensitive. So I can't say module load ANTS. It will tell me there's no such module. I have to say module load and the, the name of the module, the full either with or without the uh, version number. Both of these will work. So that's a brief summary of how you use modules in the BioWolf cluster. Uh, as a hands-on session, I suggest that you try the module avail command, then module avail and some application name. Load a module, uh, look and see what modules you have listed. Do an echo dollar path from time to time to see uh, how your path is changing when you load and unload these modules. And do a module display of some module to show, uh, to see exactly how the module is set up in Lua. Thank you.